What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, let me say this before I go forward with this. I know a lot of y'all disagree with my Draymond Green pick, right? And you know I don't like Draymond Green. But this is the thing we got to look at here. Even if you don't agree that he's a top 10 role player, that, that's fine. My argument with Draymond Green has always been that he's not a Hall of Famer. Okay? He's not a Hall of Famer. Um, A.C. Green is not a Hall of Famer. He was a damn good role player, but not a Hall of Famer. Okay? Um, Draymond believes that he's like a top 20 or 30 all-time player in his mind. You see what I'm saying? Like, Draymond thinks that he's, like, up there with Steph Curry and them. That's my issue with him. He's not what he thinks he is. But there was a time when he was an integral valuable player for the for the uh, Golden State Warriors. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I can't deny the all uh, I can't deny the uh, all defensive teams. I can't deny the uh, all-star selections. I think it's four of them. I can't deny the uh, uh, defense player of the year award. I can't deny the four championships. That means something. I don't like them. I can't stand them, but I can't deny that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, at number 10, I had A.C. Green. Number 9, Draymond Green. Number 8, the original sixth man in NBA history, the great Frank Ramsey. Number 7, I had Danny Ainge. And number 6, I have Lamar Odom. I remember when Lamar Odom was drafted, uh, many people were making comparisons between him and Magic Johnson, I never thought that he was going to be a Magic Johnson level player. But Lamar Odom proved to be a very valuable player in the NBA, especially for the Los Angeles Lakers and especially for Kobe Bean Bryant. Uh, pretty much, man, he was all that Kobe had that one year, you know, 05, 06, when uh Somehow, the Lakers were still able to win 45 games. They had a very depleted roster. Um, Lamar Odom was the only guy out there that Kobe could even somewhat depend on offensively. And um, Lamar Odom was a, a matchup nightmare at small forward. Six foot 10, 230 pounds, but could handle the Brock. Uh, he could score in the post. He had a mid-range. He could occasionally knock down, you know, three pointers. This is before it was a proliferation of, you know, stretches. So Lamar Odom, he could play defense. He was athletic, especially in his younger years. Uh, he could run the fast break. He could be effective in the fast break situations and in the half court situations. Matter of fact, he was more effective defensively in the half court situations. Matter of fact, it was guys like Lamar Odom that helped to stymie the three-point attack of the Orlando Magic back in 2009 NBA Finals. And um, as far as his accolades is concerned, Lamar Odom was a two-time NBA champion, uh, winning championships in 2009-2010 with the Los Angeles Lakers. He was the sixth man of the year in 2011. He was on the NBA All-Rookie First Team in 2000. He scored... Uh, almost 13,000 points in his career, grabbed over 8,000 rebounds, and dished out more than 3,500 assists. So that translated to a career average of 13.3 points, 8.4 rebounds, and 3.7 assists. There's nothing I meant to uh, bring up. He was a very prolific rebounder for a, being a small forward. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. 8.4 rebounds. This is from a role player. That's more than what LeBron James is averaging as a starter playing heavy minutes. That's how good a rebounder Lamar Odom was. Um, he won the bronze in Athens that, fit, that failed Olympic team in 2004. But he did win the gold in Turkey in the FIBA World Championships in 2010. Uh, Lamar Odom was drafted back in, I think it was 99? Yeah, he was drafted out of Rhode Island. 
uh, the fourth overall pick in the 1999 draft, selected by the Los Angeles Clippers. Much of his career uh, was played with drug issues, uh, violating the NBA's drug policy. Oftentimes, marijuana was the primary culprit. And this was during the David Stern era, so the league was a lot more conservative uh, when it came to drugs. Uh, so, you know, Lamar Odom got a bad rap for that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Lamar Odom played one season with the Miami Heat, the 2003-2004 season, which happened to be Dwayne Wade's first year in the NBA. Uh, then, of course, in 2004, um, he signed with the Los Angeles Lakers. Matter of fact, I, no, 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 no. I take that back. I think he signed as a, a, a as a restricted free agent with the Miami Heat, but then he was traded to the Lakers. Yeah, he was traded to the Lakers. He was in the package for Shaquille O'Neal. That's what happened. He got traded in 2004 when Shaq was traded to Miami. That's how Lamar Odom got over there. And, of course, those were the golden years of Lamar Odom's career. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to see something right quick. As a Los Angeles Laker, he played seven seasons. Averaging 13.7 points, 9.5 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 49% from the floor, 33% from downtown, and 68% from the foul line. Oh, that's right. For his career, he was a 69% free throw shooter, so uh, not excellent, but not awful either. Around 70% for his career. Um, he proved to be very valuable for the Los Angeles Lakers and very popular with Phil Jackson. Because everybody know Phil liked uh, players with length and size. Uh, so he was obviously very valuable for the Los Angeles Lakers. As I said before, you know, he provided scoring, uh, post scoring. And, and like I said, he was a small forward, but um, he had the size to oftentimes play at the power four position. Even sometimes at the center position, uh, depending upon the matchup. As a matter of fact, even though he was a role player and came off the bench for most of his career, uh, post, I think, Clippers. I think with the Clippers he was a starter, but afterward I think he became more of a role player coming off the bench. But even with that, in most pivotal games, especially the playoffs, even though Andrew Bynum would start for the Lakers, it was Lamar Odom that would play the pivotal minutes down the stretch for those games because of his versatility, because of his skill set, because of his defensive ability, uh, experience. Uh, he often played the, the, the games down the stretch for those uh, Lakers teams. After his stint with the Lakers, I believe he played for the Dallas Mavericks a couple of years, but it, by that point, he was starting to fall off a bit as a player. Then he played overseas. And of course, you know, uh, unfortunately, part of the reason why Lamar Odom's career faltered is because he was starting to seriously have issues with drugs. And um, we almost lost him several years ago. Uh, it was fortunate that the uh, hotel worker found him at that brothel um, for much of his career. And, and since then, I believe he has uh, largely recovered from his drug issues. And, you know, but one of the things that Lamar Odom did to try to try to compensate for his drug habit was he used to eat a lot of candy. Now, that's not healthy, right? But at the same time, would you rather have someone snort Coke incessantly or would you rather them eat Starburst, uh, Starburst 
or eat Skittles incessantly. You know what I'm saying? Rather have them do the other thing. You, you, you can go to dentists to fix cavities, but, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, Lamar Odom, one, in my opinion, one of the top six men of all time. Clearly a top ten all-time uh, role player. I should say role player, not six men. One of the top role players in NBA history. Uh, number six, Lamar Odom. Tell me what you guys think.